Can I show the tag of what it is? Sure. So this is what it is. Dusty and I were able to get most of this frame put together. Turned out pretty good. All the measurements are almost spot on. Everything's definitely well within an eighth inch. Uh, welded a couple of temporary cross members in just to hold everything in place. Um, but I gotta get this front end in. But the magic piece that I need to get that in is right here on the back bench. Barnes sent me this kit. It's a radius arm kit to mount that Super Duty front end in that frame. It's just kind of a universal kit that they sell. It's really quite nice. So this is basically everything for one radius arm. I'm going to make the upper link fairly short. I'm gonna to have to cut it down to about 18 inches. And then this bracket welds to there. And then this connects to here. This is their 36 inch kit, so I'll just cut that upper link bar in half, make it 18, that should work. I can't go very much longer than that because this upper piece will probably hit the frame under full compression. So I'm just gonna kind of tack it all together, get that axle under the, under the frame and do some flexing, see what, how it all works. Oh, and the other thing that Barnes sent me that's really nice for doing these Ford front ends is this kit right here. So my dad got some wild, has got some more wild aspirations and he decided that um, the factory bolt pattern on this, I think it's like eight on eight by 170 or something, something weird. Wasn't good enough for him. So he, he decided that I get to be the one to drill these out to eight by six and a half. Well, we were able to get the kit from Barnes to do it though. So it comes with this plate, a little drilling guide. You just have to press this in there. You just bolt it down with the bolts that they have, little spacers that they put underneath of this. What I've been doing is just mark them and then drill them all out to a quarter and then three eighths and then I was drilling them to 15 millimeters, what I did on the last one. It's really easy. You just gotta tighten these down, it centers it up and then drill your hole. So, just takes a little while. Uh, Caden did it for me while I was cutting the brackets off of that front end. I'll have to do a little bit of finish reaming to the uh, to the holes. Let's see to get these to fit. They're just a little on the small side. Yeah. Helps if you pull all the lug nuts off. But as you can see, this is probably. I think this shoulder is still about ten thousandths or so bigger than this hole. So I've got a tapered reamer, so I'm just going to open these up front and back just a little bit so that this isn't quite such a press fit. It would work and go in just fine, but it'd be pretty tough to change one on the trail. So for now, I'm just going to start welding these all together, get that thing ready to go underneath that truck so I can get it on its wheels and maybe get it out of the shop. Well, got the uh, radius arms kind of built last night to get the front axle rolled underneath the front of the frame. And uh, that's more or less where it's gonna sit. So I've got this radius arm just dropped down on a stand so I can grind the frame down there. And after I do that, I'll tack that piece into place and see how it looks and do the same thing to the other side. I'm gonna need to shorten this upper radius arm quite a bit. I made it quite long and what's going to end up happening is this bracket will hit the frame before it reaches full compression so I'll shorten that up 
uh, I think I'm gonna shorten it to about 19 inches long from its current length of about 23 inches long roughly so shorten it up about four or five inches and uh, that should take care of that little deal once I get both of those tacked into place then I should be able to cycle this a little bit see how it's gonna fit inside the frame So we're uh, we're trying to mount the tires for uh, for Grizz. I'm trying. <laughs> I'm just watching and laughing, but uh... is that it? Is it no, it keeps coming there? up. Here, I'll hold it right there. Okay. Yeah, we got to do something different. That ain't it's working. It's not gonna work. We get <laughs> it on, and oh my spots God. keep coming up, no matter how much weight we put on the stupid tire. I've been on the tire working it. Push it. One person pushes with the extension while Kenner's going, and it still won't go on. Don't lift Look, okay, check out the bucket. We broke the bucket. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. That's because I've been kneeling over here, shaking it, trying to get it to go. Oh, it's it got to be in more? Well, no, but you have just... to you have to bolt this side and then put compressed air on it first. It's just the, oh, get that of the tire is so thick. So this lip right here, see how it sounds such a taper? It actually curves in if you feel it. So we need to take in the grinder and grind that back so it's more of a radius. Yeah, it's pretty much on that one as we've gone by, it's been taking oh, the wow. off. Yeah. Yes. That one's if we probably even, half gone. Well, Five. if you can just take an, a grinder and go around it and roll that back so it'll, so it's not putting so much pressure on and then it'll slide over the sharp edge of the wheel too. Do you see what size tire he's running? Where does it say? Right there. 42, 14, 5R17s.
All right, got Kyler with us today. He decided to come out today. But we're uh, going over here. Kenner's already over here with the tractor. We're gonna move this crate. So a few of you commented when Kenner ran into the door that we probably should move this crate. Well, it's been there because it's been the safest spot we have for it. But now you get to see what it is because it's time for it to come in the shop. We need a rotated back. Oh yeah, we gotta move it back. Okay. Me and Kate have moved to even get my there. All right, so come over here and you can just kind of video what we're doing. Okay, ready? The chain? Oh. Let's grab the chain. We'll do this. We got a tractor here. We're gonna put it to work. You wanna take the clothes off? Yeah, let's we'll just toss them off real quick. Okay, a little more. Okay. All right, I'll pick you up. Watch the floater. Perfect. Can you floater? Okay. Yep. Okay, the boys got this uh, motor in the shop for me. We kind of gave you a sneak peek of that. Here's a little bit more comprehensive look at it. We're trying to get the stuff all stripped off of it so we can get it set in. Uh, we're not gonna use any of the original computer or anything on this motor, so we're gonna use Holly uh, controller on it. Can I show the tag of what it is? Sure, so this is what it is. It's a 73 Ford out of a 2022 E350 with 610 miles on it. 
this came out of a van that was getting converted to electric so when they did the conversion they pulled everything out of the van we have the radiator the hoses the all the accessories everything but the computer they didn't send the computer with it but everything else all the harness everything that pretty much touched the motor they sent in the crate with it mm -hmm. it was a pretty good deal really for what i got and especially with basically zero miles on it the, the 610 miles i'm sure just the miles for, it took to deliver the van to wherever did the conversions but uh anyway this is all new territory for me never really messed with one of these before so in fact this is the first one i've ever seen or put my hands on gonna definitely be learning a lot here shortly uh, learning about all the electronics uh, the dimensions and everything else but i'm hoping that big opening right there will take that motor and the trans we're just going to use a 4l80 makes it real easy to adapt it to transfer cases and everything else and that's all stuff that i have and common stuff so the adapter is pretty common stuff because it is the same bell housing as a coyote or the earlier triton 4654 so the adapters are fairly readily available i have it here somewhere to all the haters the hardcore gm guys which we are a little bit, but apparently not as hardcore. And you'll call us out on it, we know. Yep. We're still using a GM trance. Yep. This is the adapter to make it all possible. Hopefully it all works. So again, this is all new stuff. We'll give her a shot. And uh, you get to watch and learn as we make all the crazy mistakes. Watch a Chevy guy be a little bit less of a Chevy guy. And for all you guys who are wondering why in the world I'm doing this, uh, it's pretty simple. The cost per horsepower is actually pretty good for this. So these uh, Godzillas, you put a cam in it and a decent tune and they're, they make nearly 600 horsepower. The uh, 8 one I was gonna put in this. The only way to get 600 horsepower is to spend huge money on cylinder heads and pistons and everything else or put boost to it. The torque's about the same as an 8 one, but quite a bit more horsepower, which is what I want and uh, it's a, in a smaller and lighter package to boot. Plus it's a new challenge and thought it would be fun to try something new. Get it tore down, we'll get the adapter on it, see if we can get the transmission bolted up to it, and then see what we're gonna have to cut to make it fit. Some of this other stuff handled. Dang good. 
and you know, I'll figure it out. So, so what trance are you going to put in it to? It's a four oh, so this is sitting right here. Not right. this trance, but this one's just Did you walk up? No, yeah, this, this one's a core that's all buried up. Oh, okay. But uh, for now, we're just going to use it to get everything locked up. Uh -huh. but, so I had to buy this adapter right here to uh, bolt the GM tranny to, the, to this motor. It saves me a lot of hassle. Oh, I'm so freaking sick. Because then I can use a uh, Holly computer. Uh -huh. A Holly computer will run back or run back. Yeah. Let's see what happens. That's awesome. How's the Scout? That was a cool video. Yeah. That was a really cool video. Since we pushed it off, we haven't done anything to it. Not a thing. Okay. Yeah, we'll deal with it later. You got time, man. Right? That's yeah. the thing. So when I get this to a good stopping point, I get the the goal is to have the scout usable for like probably trail here. Really? So October. So that's cool. Yeah, if I don't put a blower on, I don't like to get the make a little elbow, it turns that far on. That's as if I don't put a blower on a thing. You're not going to put a blower on something? <laughs> yeah. Well, if I don't have it. Gotta get it running first. Well, no, <laughs> I just gotta gather up that extra $7,000. What? Oh, yeah, well, it's not going to have a blower on it. <laughs> here <laughs> yeah it's about it. <laughs> that's pretty much it yep and mike could sneak one under the motor it would have to be skinny yep cool thing is that cross member that temporary cross member holds the chance up <laughs> oh you still got the original height up in it and it it clears it clears up there might be more room under there than there is on Cadence. So go figure. It's still really cool how well that fits. It's more big block than it was. Yeah. But the manifolds would work. Uh, imagine if I wouldn't have wiped the drain on it. Oh my gosh. This would have been the biggest. It would have been a joke. You. Yeah, I don't know if you would have got it to fit. So it's early in the morning again. Everybody else is asleep. My dad has screws in the shop right now. We got the wheels and tires all put together for it. Got the 7.3 dropped in it. And it's been going pretty good. I just have the front axle sitting in it, kind of, with the radius arms. Sort of built. But I am working on my core support right now. Okay, got this motor set in here. Um, spent quite a bit of time poking around with it with a measuring tape, looking at all the little interference points, and I think this is the spot where it's gonna live. So I've got almost five inches of clearance there between the axle and the oil pan. And uh, this will be roughly ride height. It may go up one inch, depending on how things lay out right here with the tie rod and I got a drag link to put in here still and a track bar. But you can see there's just enough room right there on the oil cooler for the front axle to clear it and the front drive line to clear it. We got a nice amount of clearance on the firewall. Should be able to get that valve cover off. So we have just enough hood height. I'll have to do something with that throttle body, but that's a known issue with these motors. So there's a couple places that make an elbow to point that throttle body down. So makes it a little easier to plumb it. The heater box is going to come out anyway, so as you can see that coils right on it but i still have good clearance at the firewall but i'll get that heater box out here shortly just enough room for the exhaust manifold on this side and i didn't have to cut the floor at all looks like the trance is going to clear it's just the trance is just sitting on a block of wood on that temporary cross member that i had for building the frame so overall i'm pretty happy with it for motor mounts 
Um, I bought these plates. Actually, I bought a whole kit to do it, but I didn't like the way they were doing it. The motor mount bushings were just teeny tiny and there was no way they were gonna live, so. But the plates are nice. So what I'm gonna do is I'll use this piece like so. And then I got this piece of inch and three quarter DOM that'll weld there. And then I'll put two additional gussets on there to triangulate it. And then for an insulator, I like to use these rubber spring eye bushings. I prefer these over urethane. The urethane ones, when they get hot with the weight on them, they like to sag. End up replacing them every year or two, depending on how, how much heat they see. But these rubber ones, it's all vulcanized into one piece. There's not a ton of rubber in here, so it can't move a lot, but it's enough to insulate it, and they hold up to the heat way better, and they're cheap. I think I paid 12 bucks for a pair of these, and these are uh, YJ spring eye bushings. They're inch and a half, so they slide right inside of that inch and three quarter. Uh, once I get done welding on it, the welds will distort this uh, sleeve enough that I'll actually have to press the bushing in so it works out really really well. Those never have to come out. Yeah. Say good morning. Okay. Good morning. <laughs> I'm putting that on there. <laughs> I, I know you are. Okay, anyway. Um, so a little bit more work for me. Just doing some finished work on the core support. Just with some of the spots that I welded up, I was just doing some plastic work on it to make it all smooth again. Yeah, kind of my first time spreading some glaze. Um, you can see that it was starting to set up here, but should be able to sand most of it out. I'll have to put another coat on it and I gotta get this spot, but. It's called glaze? It is glaze, yes. That's what it's called, this glaze. Yeah. I thought it was epoxy. No, it's, 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 it's the thicker stuff they call filler, but this is glaze. For what? Well, this is just, it's just something that's thinner and easier to lay on for littler spots. If you gotta, if you're doing like the whole door or something, you start with some filler because there's more space to fill, but with a little stuff like this that's pretty close, you just throw some glaze on it and sand it off. So it's a lot quicker. Cool. Okay, I got this laid out for the pieces that go from the frame to the motor mounts. That's as far as I've got. This is 100% design concurrent with construction. So you'll just have to check back. I have no idea what it's gonna look like, so. I'm just hoping it works. That's all I care at this point. So, but that's kind of how we do these kinds of things, especially when it's all new stuff. I'm just figuring out laying this stuff out. So, Kendall's cutting a piece that goes below here. To make this section, it's only four inch now. So he's adding two more inches. We're adding two more inches to it. So it's six inch all the way. This is only four. Oh. And I did that because I didn't know what was going to hit right there. But we need that to uh, to build our motor mount plates off of. So uh, trying to figure out how to do that now. Well, you got your heater box off. Yep, Kendall did that. Keep laying things out, figure it out, so. Especially if I can put, put my measuring tape out. <laughs> I'll have every tape I own out strung around the shop. Now it goes. It's still loud. <laughs> so this goes right here, strengthens up the bottom part of the frame, or it's still four in it. Yeah. Just gotta trim this one spot off 
So the stirring box will clear it. Oh, I'm Is it good over here? I haven't even messed with that side yet, so see, you determined the yeah, like that you can hit back there before it gets here. Yeah, there's still four inches between here and and this, so oh, okay. which is about the number that everything else hit, so yeah, so I might as well have the string. to be so get that welded but everything's going to be perfect so we got just like everywhere else we got about four inches of clearance and there's about four inches of clearance to that to the uh, tie rod from the frame and we got about two inches to there which translates to roughly to four inches and then we have uh, about five inches to the oil pan you can see four inch. Right. You can see there's four and a half inches. Nice. So. So everything will hit at the same time. Well, oh wait, that's be... four and a half. So. Exactly. So it'll hit the frame long before it hits the oil pans. So that's what I want. But you can also tell that there's almost five inches right here because that's a three and a half inch block, and that's an inch and a half block of wood. Kendall's drilling the holes for these brackets that run from here to the motor mounts. So we should be able to run a bolt through those and uh, square everything up and, and tack those to the frame. And then we'll decide what the next step in the design and structure is of this whole thing. So. All right, I think we got all the main parts put together for these mounts. So I got this side tacked together. You can see I added a I added a washer right there. Just so when I bolt this all together, it'll make it a lot easier to get the motor in and out. But there's just a little bit of a gap, and then when you bolt it together, it'll it'll pull together. So um, that'll save a lot of grief. So this side, I need to weld this right here so then I can put my two brackets in uh, since I won't be able to have any access to it once those brackets are in and then uh, weld all the outside and then I can weld my brackets once I get all these brackets welded then I'll be able to see just exactly how far the frame's gonna flex where there's no cross member uh, or anything it's gonna move a long ways because you got you got those long arms with all that weight pulling down so it's going to roll those frame rails quite a bit but that'll be okay for now i do have a one cross member in the front that'll kind of help hold it in place but but it's going to be a little little flimsy and a little springy for now um, i'll need to uh, build the cross member that goes under the motor take some of the pressure off and then i need to put a cross member across here somewhere about where this piece of tube is and that'll help quite a bit as well but i can't do that till i get the steering box in and know exactly where that's going to be and then to for the final rigidity in the frame um, there'll have to be something to tie the shock towers keep those rails from rolling so for now i got about a half an hour left before i have to clean up so i'm just gonna go to town see if i can get this engine to sit here and without any blocks between the oil pan and the front differentials Till next time, remember we all have our own challenges. So when you get knocked down, get up, dust yourself off, get back after it, and make sure you allow others the same opportunity. Thanks for watching.